I'm here looking for treasure, and you turn up with this. How do you make money for nothing? This is a lovely table. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. That is brilliant. Are you sure? Yeah, I am. That's why creative carpenter JJ Chalmers wants to get his hands on things before they hit the skip. I would love to try and come up with some use for it. That'd be brilliant. I've been a school teacher and a Royal Marine before getting a second chance as a medal winning cyclist. I'm passionate about making and mending to transform old stuff into profit making pieces. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers. This has seen better days. <laughs> I just think they need some colour, they need brought to life. He can transform his finds into desirable. What an amazing transformation. Cheers, JJ. Valuable. Look at that. That is fun. Well done. And hopefully saleable items. I don't think I'm going to have any problem selling this. If JJ is successful, then he can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. £128. Unbelievable. Thank you. At the Dunbar Recycling Centre, the people of East Lothian are binning their bikes. They must have got tired of them. Look at this place. It got busy. But here to upcycle unwanted items, JJ Chalmers is taking a spin around the centre in search of things worth saving. I'm going to find some great stuff today. I'm going to have to step outside my comfort zone now. You never know what's going to turn up. I can't wait to find out. JJ's on the lookout for three items packed with potential. What are you doing, just a clear out? That he can redesign or reimagine and sell on for cash. It's not for me. But don't try this for yourself. JJ had to get special permission to sniff out his projects. Lovely ornament on the dashboard there. I think you might be a dasher. Vanessa's arrived, but will JJ dash over to see what she's unloading? This looks well loved. It's well loved. <laughs> <laughs> well and truly. Sorry, I'm JJ, by the way. I'm Vanessa. Nice to meet you, JJ. Lovely to meet you. Was this yours? No, no, this was mum and dad's. You're having a clear out, are you? Um, yeah, mum and dad passed... Well, mum passed away a couple of weeks ago, so we have to clear the house. Right, I'm very sorry to hear that. Yeah, I can see it's a proper clear out. So was this in their in their living room? In their living room, yes. Mum's chair, dad's chair, kids, grandchildren. <laughs> right. And the poofy was for the grandchildren. Grandchildren always got the poofy. Is it leather, by the way? It is leather, yes. Right, it is. I mean the arms look well used. People must have piled on these. Yes, arms were big enough you could sit one on each arm, two on the couch. <laughs> God, it sounds like there's some amazing memories in this. There are some great memories. Just being together. I, I would love to take this away and try and give it a, a, a new life, that's okay. all right. Yeah. I think, I think it's time as a sofa might be over. I think it's definitely over as a sofa. So would you mind if I took it away? You certainly can. Oh, definitely fantastic. can. Thank you so much. That's great, thank Cheers. you. JJ's bagged a seriously sat on sofa set. Vanessa, are you pleased he's taken it on? I'm so pleased the couches have been recycled, but I have no idea what they could possibly do with them. They're pretty well worn, so I'm sure anything can only be an improvement. This has lived a life, and I bet you it's got so many stories to tell. However, there are so many parts of it which are well beyond saving. Having said that, if you know where to look, there are bits of leather in here that have a second life. But who am I going to give it to? That's the question. Well, there's one sofa salvaging specialist standing by. With Neil Rag, no materials off limits when it comes to bag making. His clever cuts and sensational stitching can usually transform the most unlikely fabric into fabulous bags and accessories. I love bags. I don't know, it's just a thing that you can't have too many of. There needs to be the right one for the right occasion. I like designing bags that really fit a function. So if it's outdoors, if it's high street, if it's jungle, I love making different bags for different occasions. 
I love sewing because you're creating something from nothing. What didn't used to be there is now there and it's going to last a long time. The Simple Sewing Machine is an amazing tool. Uh, I really enjoy creating something and, and watching it lead a new life. Well, Neil, there's a well-worn seating set waiting for a new life, but the condition of it might not sit well with you. JJ has one item tucked away. I need to figure out what to do with a big old hedge, because people are getting rid of loads of them. But he still has two more to find. I'm like a kid waiting for Santa Claus, watching this corner, waiting for cars to come in. Well, are you on the nice list, JJ? Clearly not been good enough. Not even a piece of coal. I wouldn't feel too bad. It is July after all. Suze has turned up. But will JJ think Christmas has come early when he sees what she's chucking? What a charming piece of furniture. It's lovely. I'm JJ. Hi, I'm Suze. Lovely to meet you. It's a shame to see it going out. How long have you had that for? Oh, it's got to be at least 20-odd so 20, 20 years. It's sat in front of the sofa, an old sofa, um, but just doesn't go with modern, the modern house now. So it's sat in, sat in our loft for the last uh, 15, 20 years um, and time to tidy the loft out. You were using it as like a footstool. Yeah. But, it, I mean, what is it? It's not a... Of that age, they didn't have tellies. No, so no, no. I'm thinking no. they didn't use it for sitting and watching we the telly We be believe it was an old uh, church kneeling stool. Ah, yes. Can you remember where you got it? Yeah, bought it at an antiques fair in South End many, many moons ago. Um, I think we paid about £10, £15 for it. Oh, that's an absolute steal. It is absolutely stunning. It would be such a shame to see this going out. I would love to take this away if that would be all right. That would be amazing. If it can get re reused, um, then fantastic. And if I can, could I come back and show you? That would be amazing. That would be brilliant. Right, well, I'm just going to grab it. Lovely. Thanks so, uh, so much. I'll be in touch. OK, goodbye. JJ's second find is an old prayer bench. Suze, what in heaven's name do you think he might do with it? Who knows, it could be made into a smaller bit of furniture or um, something a little bit unique, but it's great that it's going to a new home. Well, this is a lovely prayer stool. It's dainty, it's well-made, it's in fabulous condition, but it's not that versatile. There aren't that many homes that this style of design would suit, but I think with the right touch, we could give it some mass appeal. But which maker does JJ have faith in to create something divine? Designer Sarah Peterson restores reclaimed furniture using bright and bold patterns. With her clever colour choices, Sarah can bring things back from the brink and let them live on. I absolutely love my job. It's not really even a job to me, actually. It's just some place that I come to have fun. It's my happy place, really. I don't really have a routine for getting into a creative space because I think I'm actually always there, really. There's, on some kind of level inside my head, I'm always thinking of the next kind of design, being creative and working on different projects all the time. It's a joy. Well, Sarah, good luck coming up with a creative way to update this old thing. You might need to get by on a wing and a prayer. After a lot of searching, JJ has two items. I've been at this too long. I think I'm seeing double. But he still has to find something to work on himself before he can have a rest. People have said that the world of upcycling is a pressure cooker, but they don't know what they're talking about. This is a pressure cooker. Billy's chucking stuff, but will any of it take the pressure off JJ's search? Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> I'm JJ, sorry. Ah, oh, nice to meet you. I'm Billy. What? How did you come to have this? I have a bar and I bought it about seven, maybe eight years ago. Right. And the idea was just to utilise it on the bar and the old till drawer that was in it, I was hoping to get it all connected so it would just pop open the till and we could use it as the till for the bar. But I've not managed to do that. And to be honest, it takes up too much space, so I've just got... I've just basically got to get rid of it. Where, where did you get it in the first place? Um, an old kind of restoration yard, and it was dug in amongst the load of stuff. Do you have any idea how old it is? I mean, it's in it's an old fashioned money by the looks of stuff. I wouldn't know. No, nah. no idea. I mean, it's amazing. I, I would love to take this away. I don't know what I would do with it, but 
Uh, yeah, I would love to try and sort something out. Can I, can I have that? Of course you can, yeah. Right, well, if I can sort something out, can I come back and show you? Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Brilliant. I'd love to see it, yeah, I'd love to see something happen with that, so... Thank you so much. Well, you're more than welcome. Cheers. Cheers. JJ's acquired an old cash register. Billy, are you relieved it's avoided the skip? I'm delighted that it's going to be recycled. Uh, hopefully it'll get turned back into a till again, or maybe some sort of lighting fixture. I don't know, I don't know. How could I not take this? It's going to be a tricky upcycle, but with the right imagination and probably some elbow grease, we'll cash in. Well, don't forget to check the cash drawer first. You could find some money for nothing. With three items collected, JJ has his items. Neil will have his work cut out salvaging usable leather from the well-worn sofa set. Sarah's challenge is to rejuvenate the kneeling bench with a new look. And JJ might struggle to ring up one last sale for the register. Today was tough at times, but I couldn't be happier with what I've saved. They might not look their best at the moment, but trust me, once I've finished with them, you won't recognise them. Away from the recycling centre in the Georgian market town of Marlow, Bag Boffin Neil is sitting down on the job. Hmm. Don't get too comfy, Neil. JJ's hoping you can transform this lot. So, what do you think? It's nice leather, but there's, there's a load of damage to it. I have to go and find my scissors. Well, before you start slicing, you might want to have a chat with JJ. Hi, JJ. Hey, Neil. How are you doing? I'm very well, I'm very well. I've got, I've got loads of furniture. Loads of furniture with loads of leather, more importantly. Uh, I thought it could be used to make hold holes. What do you think? Well, looking at it, there's a lot of leather that is quite badly damaged. Yeah. So I'm going to have to work around that. But if I use pretty much all of it that's not damaged, what if I made footstools? Ah, OK, like a, like a big poofy footstool. I like it. Do you reckon that the look of the leather will be all right for that? It's not the greatest colour. It's, it, I've got to say, it's a bit drab. I wonder if I can... Spice it up a bit. <laughs> right. How spicy are you thinking? I can add some of my own leather to it, some really colourful leather, um, and, and maybe get three big footstools from everything that's here. Three of them? That's, that's quite ambitious, considering the condition, but if you think there's enough good leather there, go for it. What kind of budget do you need? Well, if I say uh, £100 per footstool, that gives you plenty of room for profit. OK, I'm happy with that. Good luck getting the most out of them and give me a shout when they're ready, all right? I shall let you know how I get on. Cheers, JJ. Cheers, Neil. See you soon. Bye. I've said three footstools, but on closer inspection, there's a lot of damaged, yucky leather in this lot. Um, I hope I haven't overcommitted. Let's see what happens. Neil has £300 to try and create three generous footstools. But has he put his foot in his mouth by promising to make so many? As Neil gets to work, just outside Perth, JJ needs to make a plan for the prayer stall and is hoping Sarah can help with that. JJ's on his way up. He's managed to save me something from the recycle centre and I'm just really interested to find out what it is and I can't wait to get started. This is a great piece of furniture. It has so many lovely features, but as it stands, it's not to everybody's taste. Hopefully, though, Sarah can broaden its appeal. Hello, Sarah. Hello there. How are you? I'm very well. You? I've got this lovely dinky little prayer stool. Uh -huh. um, do you like it? I do. There's really nice elements. It's a nice size. I love these kind of barley twist parts here. Yeah, I think there's some something that we can do with that. So originally a prayer stool, but the previous owners have just been using it in front of the telly as a footstool, um, which I think is a, a perfect use, really. So I, I reckon new upholstery, lick of paint, and just give it a few more years, basically. That sounds like a really good idea, because, like you say, it's the right height for that. You know, I can see it being used, but I'm thinking maybe 
change it into something completely different. So because of the actual width of it, this would maybe work perfectly as a kind of console table for your hallway. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so we could actually stick some legs on it, we could put a top on it, we could even maybe make some kind of shelving part under here. Uh, so take the upholstery off and, and replace that with a tabletop? Yeah. You could maybe even, you know, flip it upside down just so that we've got kind of better areas to kind of stick the legs to and stuff. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. And it's also increasing the size of it. What do you reckon to the cost? I think I could do it for about £120. Really? I, I can't wait to see it. Right, I'll leave you to it. OK, bye. Cheers. There's just so many different kind of elements that are really, really nice about it. And I think if I make it into something completely different from Bench, then that's the way to go. So I am looking forward to starting. Sarah has a budget of £120 to reimagine the prayer stall as a bright console table. But once she starts taking it apart, she might have to work miracles to get it back together again. Leaving Sarah to it, JJ's only had to pop half an hour down the road to get home to Dunfermline. He's ready to get to work on the cash register and he's decided he's going to try and restore it. I love this thing. It just looks so cool. It's kind of iconic, even though I've never had my hands on one before. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this a bash. So let's get it stripped down. During his research, JJ found that this kind of cash register in this kind of condition could fetch 75 pounds. The first large part comes off it. But he's hoping that a restored and fully functional one could fetch a lot more. And would you look at that? I'm looking and it looks complicated. You got any experience doing this kind of thing, JJ? I remember taking things apart as a kid. Uh, I used to have this dodgy VCR, and I remember it used to always get jammed. So I would take it apart, get the video out, get it running again, and have to do that every sort of six months or so. So if it's like that VCR, we'll be all right. I'm no expert, but I guess that thing is nothing like a VCR. It's impressive, isn't it? A hundred years old, built by hand, I mean, if only it was really moving. Now, before I start trying to fix that, I'll still want a better view of it. So what I'm going to do is actually remove these flags so I can see into it. This 100-year-old machine was made by the National Cash Register Company, who bought the patent from a saloon owner in the late 19th century. It's all loosening up the deeper I get into it. Worried that his employees were pilfering his profit, he installed a bell that would alert him to each sale and discourage anyone from dipping their fingers in the till. In fact, early cash registers were known as thief catchers. I've been at this for a few hours now, and believe it or not, I think I've found the very small part that is stopping it. If I give this a little poke... Did you hear that? Right, let's try a different one. Voila! Tell you what. JJ's not been this happy since he fixed his VCR and saved his copy of Home Alone 2. It's locked. I am seriously delighted with that, but it is nice to put it to one side and focus my attention on something else. Uh, next, I'm going to start taking a look at these flags. Now, I went online, I had a bit of a look, and it is not a cardinal sin to give these a repaint. Before JJ piles on the paint, he's first sanding off the old paint and rust with the sander attachment on his angle grinder. Right. First, I'm going to prime these flags. JJ's done well to get the cash register apart and working again. But it won't matter a jot if he can't get it back together again. So far, JJ's only spent five pounds on paint and oil. But with a lot of intricate restoration to tackle, can he bring it back from the brink and ring up a profit? In Marlowe, 
Neil has already started stripping the sofas. Well, it looks like there's a lot of leather here, but there's a lot of damage and a lot of crusty leather that I just can't use. So I'm just going to have to cut around everything, salvage what I can. Neil promised JJ three generous footstools, but that'll all depend on how much usable leather he can salvage. So I need big, large, flat pieces because I'm making footstools. Hopefully, the back of the sofa is immaculate. Well, it's not the word I would use. What do you think? No, it's definitely not immaculate, but it might scrub up. Neil's hoping the panels might be usable once they've been cleaned. Otherwise, some leather skirts might be easier. I think burgundy's your colour, Neil. These are two pieces that are not so big, but would work for the ends. So I'm basically going to do two 45 centimetre round circles. That's what I've got to draw. That's the top and the bottom of the footstool. Neil's footstools are going to be cylindrical shaped. So half of 45 is 22 and a half. And to map out the size of the top and bottom, he's using the less than scientific method of a pen and a piece of string. OK, that's pretty much circle shaped. Wouldn't exactly circle shape be better? Neil's slicing through two layers of nearly circular leather, which requires seriously sharp scissors. Right, well, I think that's the easy part. Now I've got to find really long pieces. Next, Neil is cutting out the largest piece he has to form the body of the cylinder. But it's not big enough. Right, I'm going to need to find something I've got in stock, I think, to add to this, because there isn't enough. Um, and it'll also add a bit of colour, won't it, to make it nice and wow. It's totally unique. Neil promised JJ that he'd spice up the footstools with some wow colours. What are you thinking, Neil? So we now have a blue teal to add to the white to add to the original burgundy. I think three colours will make it much more unique and saleable. Neil's starting to assemble his first footstool and is adding a zip to give access to the fireproof wadding that he's going to stuff inside. Yeah, it's getting through it. Right, that's good. So, but the zip's going to be there. We're going to have a teal flap over the top of the zip, white stripe, and then back to the burgundy sofa. Once the big burgundy bit is on, Neil can add the circular pieces he cut out earlier, which should fit snugly on the top and bottom. Right, Neil? No, totally mismeasured. Totally miscalculated the measurements there. Oh, no. Either I've measured the side too long or the top and the bottom too small. I should have learned pie at school, shouldn't I? They are totally the wrong size. Don't tell me the string and pen method has let you down. This could be a problem. No, I haven't mismeasured. No, it seems all right. Right, that's the end, and I have measured it right, so I'm going to sew it. Wish me luck. Good luck. But for the next one, how about you use a compass to be safe? In Perth. Sarah's already busy stripping off the fabric of the old prayer bench. And the foot's up on the table. She means business. The plan is to add legs and a top with the aim of turning it into a console table. Right, my stool is now stripped. All the old material has been removed. This is actually going to be the bottom, so if I flip it over, this is now the top, so I'll put a piece of plywood top on here, and there'll also be another piece of plywood put into the base section here for a shelf. Sarah's making a start on the new shelves to slot into the prayer bench. These kinds of prayer benches, or kneelers, can be found in Christian churches for members of the congregation to rest their knees on during prayer. Like a glove! 
For private devotional use in the home, a small desk is attached to rest a Bible on and is known as a prie dieu. Let's see if this bit's going to fit. Sarah has cut the second shelf the same size as the first, but this one isn't going in as easily. Oh, the foot's up on the table again. This is getting serious. Oh, I just don't know what to do. I'm lost. I think I might have to make slats. I might put slats in before. You... Oh! I mean, how easy did that go in there? What did I do? It's a miracle! Now, to try and tidy up the edging on my new shelf here, I'm going to use something to cover it with. So I've got this. This is basically bendy wood. Now, I've never used it before. And the idea is that you heat it up and then you stick it. Once it's dry, it goes solid again, just like wood. Sarah's bendy wood is a heat-bendable wooden moulding. Switch that off. Made from sawdust and resin, when heat is applied, the resin softens, meaning its shape can be altered. I'm just going to hold it here for two seconds. It feels like plasticine when it's softer. Sarah has watched tutorials and is very carefully using a heat gun. That's gone around that corner rather beautifully. But if you don't have one, a hair dryer could work just as well. Now, I've got this bit of plywood. And this actually looks like it will be the perfect fit. So. It needs to be pretty flush at the back, because that has to sit against, flush against the wall. Sarah is securing her new plywood tabletop to the frame. Brilliant. Right, that's the last screw in. That's really nice and secure. Next, she's cutting to size some spare legs she had in her workshop, before they can be attached to the prayer bench. These are my little screws I'm going to use to basically attach the leg to the leg bracket. So one end is screwed into the wood and then the other end, which is a different thread, is screwed into the bracket. Sarah's drilling a hole for the fixing, being careful to position it as straight as possible in the centre of the leg. Oh, we're kind of squint, but I'm hoping it's not going to be too bad. But it wasn't straight enough. And then I have my slightly bent, but should be OK, fingers crossed, um, screw in place. Sarah won't know if it's going to be wobbly until it's fixed to the table. For now, she can only pray that it'll be OK. In done firmly. JJ's done all he can to the old cash register. Trying to restore it has been one of his biggest upcycling challenges to date. So, has he managed it? Well, this has been some job. Proper labour of love. We're on the home stretch now, though. The old cash register had rung up its last sale and looked beyond the point of saving. But with a lot of hard work, JJ's got it, cha-ching, back in full swing. The restored register is unrecognisable with its newly polished nickel casing shining like new, highlighting all of its decorative detail. JJ has perfectly painted the metal flags and has even built a brand new protective casing to replace the original glass. With newly stenciled lettering on the keys, the till is now in full working order. JJ has poured his heart and soul into this project, but will he make a sale? I am seriously pleased with how this has turned out. I, honestly, it might be one of the best things I've ever worked on in my life. A huge amount of work has gone into it. But honestly, when you see it like this at the end, it's so worth it. That is so cool. At the recycling centre, JJ spotted Billy's till. I have a bar and I bought it about seven, maybe eight years ago. To be honest, it takes up too much space, so I've just got... I've just basically got to get rid of it. JJ couldn't see it being scrapped, so took it off Billy's hands. Hopefully it will get turned back into a till again. I don't know. I don't know. 
You were bang on, Billy. It's still a till. And after it was advertised online, it was sold to an indoor market in Ramsgate. And manager Richard is very impressed. Our customers are going to absolutely love it. It's going to get a lot of attention. People are really going to be drawn to it like bees to a honeypot. JJ's in North Berwick to show Billy how the register scrubbed up and hand over the profit. Hello, how Billy. you doing? How's it going? Nice to see you, how are you? I'm very good, mate, very it's, good. It's... I got an amazing item off of you, that old cash register. Why did you decide to get rid of it again, though? It was just getting in the road, to be honest. Um, it's quite a small bar that we have, so it was just... Yeah, that was basically it. I worked on this one myself, and it's... It was a bit of a labour of love, because I decided it was built by a human being all those years ago, uh -huh. so why couldn't it be fixed by one? And so that's what I've done, and now it is shining as it once did. Oh, that is amazing. That's exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Well done, that's great. It's fully functional now. It'll work as a cash register. Completely functional, just as it did Brilliant. 100 years well old. Well done, GG. That's an absolute <laughs> effort. <laughs> Oh, I'd love to see it actually working as well. I'd love to show you it running, but actually, it's already sold. Right, OK. So, got some profit. Brilliant. £303 for you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Brilliant, that's really good. What are you going to do with it? Probably just put that to charity. Um, Macmillan Cancer Research. Right. Yeah, so it'll go to a good cause, but thank you so much. My mother passed away at an early age, so that is the reason why. Wow. And we've done a lot of stuff in the community to try and support Macmillan over the years, so... This will go towards that for a good cause. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that it's going to a good cause. Uh, and I love your reaction, because the till looks how both of us wanted it to look. So, it's yeah, a well, pleasure. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks very much. Bye. Cheers. JJ spent £232 replacing the till's lid, counter and hinges. It was sold for £535, giving Billy a profit of £303 to donate to a cancer charity in memory of his mum. Good man. After cashing in with his register restoration, JJ's in Marlow to see if Neil has managed to make a trio of footstools from the old leather suite. Well, JJ's on his way. I'm hoping he's going to be happy with these. I've used up as much of his sofa as I possibly could, so it's something a bit different. Well, I'm excited about this one because Neil is often the bag man, but he's promised me some footstools. Can't wait to see how he's got on. When JJ rescued it, the leather was worn and the sofa set had been sat on for the final time. But in Neil's hands... It's been repurposed as three large footstools. Neil reclaimed the best bits of burgundy leather and has expertly stitched them into a cylindrical pattern before stuffing them with firm, fire-safe upholstery wadding to try and create a great place to put your feet up. He's used strips of recycled leather offcuts to add contrasting pops of colour to the stools. But do they have the style and substance to impress JJ? Well, the sofa is gone. These are fantastic. What a transformation. Hi, JJ. What do you think? This, that's your old sofa. They look absolutely class. Love the colours. Like when you said footstools, I kind of imagined something a little bit smaller. But then again, it was a kind of huge sofa to begin with, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought, well, let's use as much of that old sofa as we possibly can. There were some scrappy bits of leather, to be honest, that we had to work around. So I worked around it, added some of my own colours to it and just made something that I think goes back into the living room now. Yeah, I love the colours of it. it. Like, it makes each one of them a bit more individual and also just more of a statement, really. So each one of them has a zip and the, the, the top or the bottom opens up. Um, and as you can see here, you could actually, instead of the wadding, you could stuff your old sleeping bags or spare bedding and get that out of your cupboards and out of the way, hidden. Fantastic. How'd you get on with the budget for it? Because you had said £100 for each of them. Yeah, so the challenge was the large pieces of leather, but it's all on budget. You've done a fantastic job on them, and, yeah, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Another amazing job. Thank you so much. Thank Cheers. you very much. Bye-bye. I'm really glad JJ was pleased with the footstools. There was a lot of leather, but at least his old sofa is now going back into a living room instead of into landfill. At 
the recycling centre, JJ spotted Vanessa unloading a leather sweep. This looks well loved. It's well loved. <laughs> <laughs> well and truly. Was this yours? No, no, this was mum and dad's. Mum's chair, dad's chair. Kids, grandchildren. <laughs> right. And the poofy was for the grandchildren. Grandchildren always got the poofy. Vanessa was happy for JJ to take it on, but didn't know what he could do with it. I have no idea what they could possibly do with them. They're pretty well worn, so I'm sure anything can only be an improvement. It wasn't all worn, Vanessa, so the best bits are now footstools. And after being advertised online, they were sold to a vintage boutique in Cornwall. Juliet and Annabelle are delighted with them. I just think they're really great piece, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You could have them in any room. They're made of brilliant, thick leather. They're just a great, versatile, stylish yeah. piece. JJ's in Dunbar to catch up with Vanessa to show her what happened to the old sofas and pass on the profit. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Lovely to see you again. And you. I got a cracking big three-piece suite off of you a little while ago, didn't That's I? That's right, yeah. But it, it didn't belong to you, though, is that right? No, it was Mum and Dad's suite. They had it um, in their house and they sadly passed away and we were clearing out the house. Well, it's had a real transformation. I sent it to Neil, who salvaged what leather he could out of certain parts of it. He turned it into footstools. Oh, wow, those look amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Love the idea that mum and dad's stuff will be in someone else's house to sit on and relax on. That, that's great. Well, I remember you saying as well that the footstool was where the kids used to sit. Yeah. And each one of them has been sold as well. Wow. So I've got a profit for you. I have got £30. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So do you know what you're going to do with it? Um, what I'll do is I'll buy Chinese for the family. <laughs> And we'll sit in my house and we'll all sit down and watch Money for Nothing together. <laughs> Fantastic. Perfect day. All right, well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, DJ. Bye. Bye bye. Neil came in on budget at £300 to create three footstools from the sofa leather. They were sold for £330, leaving Vanessa with a profit of £30 to treat her family to a takeaway. Lovely. After successfully selling the footstools, JJ has hot-footed it to Perth to find out how Sarah's got on with the prayer stall. So, Sarah, do tell. So there was loads of little kind of intricate, difficult little kind of things to work out as I was going along, trying to change it into its new form, but I'm happy with the results and we just have to wait and see what JJ thinks. So I dropped off a prayer stool with Sarah, but I'm expecting a console table. Now, this was going to be a tricky transformation and, as ever, a challenge to work on. First, it was a prayer stool and then a footstool. But has it stood up to its next reincarnation? Sarah has tried to create a cool and colourful console table. The prayer stall blends seamlessly into its new use with the addition of sturdy tapered legs. Sarah used pliable wooden edging on the shelves to complement the original barley twist detail that runs underneath the tabletop, all tied together with a coat of charcoal grey paint. Sarah hoped the dark base would allow her colourful geometric pattern to leap out from the new top to which she has added a routed edge for more decorative detail. Sarah set out to give the prayer base more function and flair, but will JJ be singing her praises when he sees it? Hey, Sarah, this is just joyous. What a happy piece. It's a nice big bold pop of colour now. Yeah, this is all flipped on its head, isn't it? Yeah, I had to flip it upside down because you've got more stability for attaching your legs and it's also a better place for me to put the top as well, or the new top. I've also put in these shelves. Was that there originally? No, this, this stuff is brilliant stuff. It's kind of like bendable wood, so you get it in strips and it's solid, but then if you apply, apply some heat, it kind of goes all floppy and it means that you can fix it onto corners and go around kind of edges and things and glue it in place. So much patience. How did you get on with the budget? Well, the budget was 120 and it came in on budget. 
Oh, fantastic. It is such an amazing transformation and a really striking piece of furniture. Thank you so much. All right, I'll get someone to come pick it up. See you later. It was great to hear JJ's reaction. I thoroughly enjoyed working on it. It was loads of fun. It's been completely transformed and I'm just so pleased that he's happy with it. That is exactly what I was hoping for and more, if I'm honest, especially that stunning top. What a transformation. I'm JJ. Hi, I'm Suze. When Suze turned up at the recycling centre, JJ stopped her in her tracks. I believe it was an old uh, church kneeling stool. It sat in front of the sofa, an old sofa, um, but just doesn't go with modern, the modern house now. Suze was happy for JJ to try and give it a new lease of life. It could be made into a smaller bit of furniture or um, something a little bit unique. It's a bigger bit of furniture now, Suze but it's definitely unique. And after it was advertised, it was sold to a vintage shop in Norfolk. Managing director Hannah loves it. The side table is so cool. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I love the design of it. I love the shape. Beyond happy with this purchase. JJ's in Dunbar to show Sue Sarah's hard work and hand over the profit. Hello. Hello, Suze. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. I got a lovely, I think it was a prayer stool. You used it in the living room at your old house. Yeah, the old house, the old, the old uh, Victorian house. We used to use it in that, but not using it in the modern houses. It has had a change of use from a prayer stool to a side table. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's a, a real transformation. It is still there at the heart of the table itself. And then, of course, it's had a significant change of style with all of these beautiful colours. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Would never have thought you could use it like that. Well, it's been sold, so I've got some profit. I have £165. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant, that's really, really, really good. I'm really surprised. Do you know what you're going to do with it? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Um, my granddad passed away recently, so I'm going to buy a tree and a pot and put it into the garden as a memory to him. That use of the money as well is so, so lovely. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. fantastic. That means, means a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sarah's total costs came to £120. The console table was sold for £285 giving Suze a profit of £165 to spend on a memorial tree for her garden in memory of her granddad. JJ saved three things from certain doom. The cash register has been restored and can be cherished once more. The sofa set has been repurposed as footstools and the prayer stool has been born again as a colourful console table. Neil and Sarah have worked so hard to turn my old items around. Things that were about to be binned have now been given a new lease of life and are headed off to new homes. Can't ask for more than that.